Vielen Dank, Herr Kessler, für die nette Einführung. Und äh, herzlich willkommen zurück, äh, sehr geehrte Damen und Herren. Ähm, ich werde nun weiterfahren auf Englisch, ähm, wie, ähm, da ich angefragt wurde, eben diesen Vortrag auf Englisch zu halten. So, the title of the um, presentation is Are Vegetarians and Vegans at Risk for Micronutrient Deficiencies? At the ETH in Zurich, we do a lot of research on micronutrient deficiency, uh, although usually not um, in Switzerland, but more in developing countries. However, we have uh, also been interested in uh, this question and have been uh, able to work on this with the Swiss Vitamin Institute in Lausanne. Um, who do, they, they do a lot of uh, vitamin analysis, and uh, this was a collaboration between ETH Zurich and uh, this uh, Swiss Vitamin Institute. So, um, as you all know, vegetarian and vegan diets are uh, thought to be uh, protective, let's say, with regard to several chronic diseases, including cancer, obesity, and cardiovascular disease. However, um, the question is whether vegetarian and vegan diets are only beneficial or whether there's also a certain risk. So we've been asking the question whether vegetarians and vegans might be at deficiency for certain micronutrients. For example, we have been thinking about iron, zinc, and uh, calcium deficiencies, which might, which might be possible, but also vitamin B12, vitamin D, and uh, also essential amino acids and long-chain fatty acids, although in our study we've not been able to study those two. So, how is the situation uh, of vegetarians and vegans in Switzerland? How, um, how prevalent are they? We do not have really good data, but uh, in Switzerland every five years we have the Swiss Health Survey, which is a survey um, carried out in the whole country. And the data from the last survey, which was in 2012, indicated that about 2.7% of the population were consuming a vegetarian or vegan diet. But this was assessed by asking people how often um, they consume meat. So they were asked, uh, how many times a week or a month do you consume meat? And those who said they consume meat never uh, were counted um, in those 2.7% here. And as you can see, the prevalence is higher uh, in women than in men with about 3.9% in women and 1.3% in men. There have been several other studies um, indicating a, a similar prevalence. And um, on the prevalence of vegans, actually, we do not have any data. But uh, the Swiss Vegetarian Association assumes that about 10% of all vegetarians uh, would follow a vegan diet. So what were our study questions? Um, we wanted to know how omnivores, vegetarians, and vegans would differ with regard to their micronutrient intake, but also the micronutrient status, and also some other factors related to um, health and lifestyle. And the final question, of course, was whether vegetarians and vegans in Switzerland, is, in Switzerland are at a risk for micronutrient deficiencies. So we had several hypot hypotheses we wanted to test. The first one was that vegetarians, and particularly, particularly vegans, will have a, lo a lower vitamin B12 status than omnivores, and also that both uh, vegetarians and vegans would show a lower iron and zinc status. On the other hand, vitamins mainly contained in fresh fruits and vegetables, as well as whole grains and nuts, so most B vitamins, beta carotene, and the vitamins A and E, we um, hypothesized that those would be, um, for those, the deficiencies would be larger in, in the omnivore population. Also, we um, tested several hypotheses with regard to um, dietary intake and lifestyle factors. And we assumed that vegans especially would have a very low calcium intake, lower than the vegetarians and omnivores, and also that both vegans and vegetarians would smoke less and uh, would consume less uh, alcohol, so kind of generally have a more healthy lifestyle. Um, um, in relation to this, also vegans and vegetarians, we thought they might be more physically active. So how did we go about this study? We have recruited a total of 206 uh, subjects. 100 of those were uh, omnivores, 53 vegetarians, and 53 vegans. We have recruited them uh, in the area of Lausanne and in the area of Zurich. They were healthy males and females between the age of 18 and 50. And for, especially for the vegetarians and the vegans, we asked whether they had already consumed that this specific diet for at least one year so that they could participate. 
They should take no uh, antibiotics or not have taken any in the last few months and not take any vitamin and mineral supplements. However, with regard to that, we, have, we had to make some exceptions as we were not able to find a sufficient number of vegans not consuming any dietary supplements. Uh, exclusion were for women, pregnancy, pregnancy and lactation, and uh, chronic diseases or surgery, which was done within the last three months before the study took place. And uh, what did we do? We have collected urine samples and blood samples from all our subjects and uh, measured the status of uh, all the vitamins you can see here, as well as the minerals, iron, uh, iodine, magnesium, and zinc. For the micronutrient intake, we did a three-day weighed food record with all participants. They had to fill in the records at home, if possible, weighing all the foods they were consuming. And uh, we gave them two questionnaires, one on uh, their lifestyle, which was uh, derived from the Swiss Health Survey, and one on physical activity, which was the International Physical Activity Questionnaire, the short version. And on the diagram down here, you can see how um, the study was done. So on the first day, we met the subjects, we took a blood sample and a urine sample, me measured the weight and height, um, and distributed all the questionnaires to them. Then they went home and uh, collected three more urine samples for us and did the three days of food records and filled in the other two questionnaires and sent all that material back to our lab. So now we already come to the results. So uh, as I said, vitamin B12 was one of our main, uh, was, was involved in one of our main hypotheses. And uh, here you can see on the left side over here, vitamin B12 intake of the three groups. And the blue is always the omnivorous group, the red, the vegetarians, and the green, the vegans. And you can see here very clearly that the vitamin B12 intake of vegans is uh, very low. And also, the vitamin B12 intake of vegetarians is below the estimated average requirement, which would be the dotted line here. So in general, we can see that the intake of vitamin B12 of those two groups uh, is very low. However, if we look at the status here on the right side, we see that the status of all three groups is similar and that we do not really see a lot of deficiencies. You can see prevalence of deficiencies here and it's just 4% in the vegetarians and 2% in the vegans. So the percentage of deficiencies is really very low. However, this is most probably not due to the normal dietary intake but to the use of supplements as I've already mentioned before. Then um, another important um, vitamin is vitamin D. And you can see here a similar pattern as for vitamin B12. Uh, we also have very low uh, intakes in the vegan population. And uh, anyway, vitamin D intake is very low in all three groups. Uh, unfortunately, we have not been able to determine vitamin B status uh, as the method was not available at the point of the study. Um, but as you probably all know, vitamin D is not only, um, vitamin D supply is not only through diet, but also through synthesis in the skin. And we generally assume that um, the population in Switzerland has relatively low uh, vitamin D status. And based on their intake, of course, the vegans might be at an even higher risk. Now we come to iron and zinc intake and status. And for both of them, um, you can see that the status is highest for the omnivorous group and a little bit lower for the vegetarian and vegan group. However, um, also for both of them, the, the status of the two, um, of the vegetarian and the vegan group is not really low. And the, the prevalence of deficiencies, for example, here for iron is uh, quite low. It's between 10 and 14% in all three groups. Uh, however, for zinc, we do see quite a high prevalence of deficiency in the vegan group. And interesting also, if you look at the intake over here, the vegans have the highest intake of iron. Nevertheless, they still have a lower status than the omnivorous group. But that is most um, probably explained by the fact that the iron they consume is of relatively low bioavailability. So in order to have a sufficient status, they need to consume more um, plant iron than they would have to consume um, iron from, from uh, animal products. So now we come to calcium and folic acid, and here you can see, um, again, like for vitamin D, uh, relatively low intake in the vegan population, and this makes sense, I, I guess, because they do not consume any dairy products, so we assume um, 
calcium intake to be low in this population group. For the vegetarians and the omnivores, there was no difference between the two groups. Unfortunately, there is no good status for calcium, uh, marker for calcium status in the blood, and therefore we do not have any data on the status. Folic acid um, is, was probably a bit of a surprise. Here we can see that the intake is higher, clearly highest in the vegan group, which is expected because folic acid is, is uh, prevalent in uh, grains. And, um, however, what we also saw was a really high uh, prevalence of folic acid deficiency in the omnivorous group. And you can see the number over here, it's 58% of, of our uh, omnivorous population actually showed deficiency for folic acid whereas the deficiency was 30% uh, in the vegetarian and only 13% in the vegan population. Now to vitamin A and vitamin C. Um, actually, for both of them, we can see, if you, we look at the status, um, this is always the line for deficiency here, by the way. Um, for both vitamin A and vitamin C, we do not see a lot of deficiencies, and generally the status of the overall population was very good. Um, however, for vitamin C here, we see again a uh, much higher intake in the vegan group compared to the two other groups. This also reflects to a certain extent in the status they have also the best vitamin C status. With regard to lifestyle factors, we did not find a lot of differences between the groups. Um, the vegan group had the uh, lowest BMI, but um, otherwise with regard to physical activity, but also tobacco and alcohol consumption, there was not really a difference between the groups. However, what we have to consider here is that probably our omnivorous population especially was not really representative of the overall population uh, in Switzerland because they were probably rather health conscious and were also interested in the topic because they participated in the study. So to summarize and to conclude, we found that um, vegans have a marginal intake of vitamin B12. However, they still have a normal status, most probably as a result of supplementation. Generally, we found a low intake of vitamin D, especially low in the vegan population, and both vegetarians and vegans have um, high intakes of iron and zinc, but this is not completely reflected in their iron and zinc status, and especially for zinc, we saw quite a lot of deficiency in the vegan population. Um, furthermore, vegans have a relative, uh, rather low calcium intake, and we have to um, suspect deficiency in calcium. And uh, omnivores clearly showed the lowest intake of vitamin C and folic acid, and also the highest prevalence of folic acid deficiency. With regard to lifestyle factors, we found only very small differences between the three groups. So despite the significant differences in micronutrient intake and status, deficiencies in the end did only differ for, the, for, the, for three of the micronutrients we looked at, which were zinc, which, where we had a higher deficiency in the vegans, vitamin C and folic acid with a higher deficiency in the omnivorous group. So I'd like to thank all uh, the people who made this um, work uh, possible, the Human Nutrition Laboratory at ETH Zurich and the Swiss Vitamin Institute in Lausanne, and also financial support, and of course our volunteers who participated. And I'd like to thank the organizers of VegMed for the invitation to present my data here. And all of you for your attention, of course. <laughs>